Hello, it is I, your friendly neighborhood they, them. I'm Vic, and welcome back to Sunshine is Sexy. The books keep wanting to fall on the ground. Stay. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the best books I have read so far this year and go over my stats with you. So I have a beautiful little spread in my Hobonichi of Vec that's going to help us through this process. Here we are. So I'm going to have just little sections of this page up on the screen so that you can look at it as I go through all of these books. So, so far this year, at least up until July 25th, so from January 1st to July 25th, I read 35 books. So I think I can get to about 60 books this year. I read 51 last year. Every year that I am a reader, I read more and more and more and more. It always goes up. Um, from like a mere 15 bucks, right? When I first started, now we're all the way to 35. And I'm very, very proud of myself. I actually read 10 books in July. So that's crazy. So I read 35 books this year. 12 of the books I read, that is 34%. A third of all the books I read this year were kids' books. I spend a lot of time reading kids' books at the hair salon when I take my love to get their hair cut. And I just love, I just love kids books. So my top four kids books that I read so far, I have them right here. At least I have three of them right here. So there's one that I don't have. I'll talk about the one that I don't have. It's from Bird Baylor and it's called I'm in Charge of Celebrations. I don't have it anymore because we bought it for a friend who was pregnant and just gave birth to a cute little boy. And we bought him some children's books. Um, and Bird Baylor is also the author of Everybody Needs a Rock, which is one of my favorite books. So it's about how you decide what makes a day special and any day can be a day for celebration. So I've taken little days like, okay, today's aftertaste day and every day this year. Hi, I love you. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Let's you know that any day that's special to you, any day that something astounding or even little happens that makes you happy, you can celebrate it. Um, and I like taking that book and it kind of lives rent free in my head. So anytime we have a special day, I'm like, OK, this is that day. And every day that day for the rest of our lives, it'll be like aftertaste day or it'll be like book day and we'll celebrate it. So that's my first favorite kids books. My second was Frog and Toad are Friends. Yes, I made it into adulthood without reading a single Frog and Toad book. Frog and Toad are in love. Frog and Toad teach great lessons. Frog and Toad get me. They just want to go on walks and have cookies and take naps. Toad and Frog went for a long walk. They walked across a large meadow. They walked in the woods. They walked along the river. They live my dream life. They live my dream life. Then we have Worm Loves Worm. This is one of those books that I read at the hair salon and then immediately purchased. It's about two worms that are in love and get married and the worms have no gender and all of the animal kingdoms trying to get them to follow the rules. Well, you need bridesmaids and a, a groom and a bride and they're like, we're just worms and we're just love each other and we want to get married and we could both be the bride and we could both be the groom and Worm Loves Worm. And then finally, we have Orange is an Apricot, Green is a Tree Frog. I learned about this kid's book through Rebecca Eats Books. And it's just, it's a book about colors, but it's stunning. It's stunning. Like, I would hang this book up on my wall. The art is beautiful. It has great words and vocabulary for kids, like white dove, white onion, button mushroom. It's art, and it's also... A lot of learning. Uh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. 
So those are my top four kids books. Then four of the out of the 35 books I read this year. So that's 11% were comic books and manga. And my favorite comic book, I don't have to show you because I borrowed it from my library, but it was The Okay Witch. I haven't read the second one yet, but it was really, really sweet. It's like if you grew up watching Charmed or Sabrina the Teenage Witch, right? It's a coming of age tale of a young girl who realizes that she's a witch and has magical powers and she has a familiar, she has a cat. Um, and the cat is an old friend who died like an ancestor who's queer and like met the love of his life on a bridge and it was like two guys in love so there's like a little queer representation in there there's this whole world with the goddess Hecate and um, the owner of the town is like a witch hunter and anti-witch um, it's really fun and really cute and I'd recommend it five stars well I think I gave it four but it's like a five star comic be okay witch it's really 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 sweet and entertaining and if you love witches and you grew up watching shows with, about witches like I think you would like it then 10 out of the 35 books that I read 28 percent were novels or fiction and my favorites the first favorite was an apprenticeship or the book of Pleasures by Clarice Lispector. Here it is. This was a love story. And it was also... I Was this my first? This was my third. This was my third Lispector novel. The first being The Hour of the Star. The second, Agua Viva. And I basically studied the hell out of this book. It is annotated to the brim and I enjoyed my time in this book so damn much I don't think anyone writes the way that Clarice Slicebector writes it's about a, a man and a woman a man who is a professor and a woman who they can't be together because she still has a lot of growing up to do and healing to do and has to decide who she is what her wants and needs are who she is in the world and he's like we have to get to the same level like before we can date um i hate him i dislike their relationship i think he's annoying and uh, full of himself but i love clarice i love our main character i love clarice's writing and i will read this every damn day for the rest of my life there's nothing to feel except this hard lack of the opium that soothes I want this intolerable thing to keep going because I want eternity. I think if you're scared of reading Clarice Lyspector, I know everyone recommends The Hour of the Star, but The Hour of the Star was really hard. It was really hard for me. And Agua Viva's like existential chaos. I think I'd recommend this because like you're like, oh, a romance. But then it's like philosophical witchcraft, but it's still, there's still like the romance plot. So I think if you haven't read Clarice yet, I, I think you should start here. This is where I would start. Five out of five. And then of course comes the second Clarice I read this year. I think if I read a Clarice that year, it will be my favorite book of the year. The Passion According to G.H. So different. So different. To the previous one this is not a love story no 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 this is a cucaracha okay she goes to clean the room and there's a goddamn cucaracha and she squishes a cucaracha and there's things oozing out of the cucaracha and she has an existential crisis because of the cucaracha and that's this whole book this whole tabbed up delightful weird book it's about a goddamn cockroach I prefer to keep asking without the courage to already have. And I do, I always will. All I have to do is need, and I have. But it is only out of fear, it is fear, since relinquishing hope means that I shall have to start living and not just promise myself life. And this is the greatest fright I have. I used to hope, but the God is today, his kingdom already begun. If you are easily grossed out, maybe don't read that book <laughs> because the cucaracha parts are disgusting. 
Um, then we have Carrie. Carrie by Stephen King. Now, when I first, first got into reading as a child, it was always goosebumps and scary stories to tell in the dark. I was always meant to be a horror girly. And then after that, I got into a vampire YA, like Twilight, Vampire Academy, Succubus Blues, Va- Vampire Night. That was an anime. <laughs> I can't remember all of the names. Um, but as an adult, I, the spookiest I got was the haunting of Hill house. And I finally read Carrie and I loved it. I needed a book where I just didn't have to pay attention. This is my partner's book. They got it from a little free library. Um, and I started reading it thinking nothing of it and I couldn't put it down. Uh, Carrie, I think about Carrie once a day. It just lives in my brain. I haven't watched the movie yet, but I really want to. Um, It says it has John Travolta in it. Okay. It's about a girl who moves things with her mind, who is abused heavily by her religious mother, like locked in the closet, hit, thrown around, like verbally abused and physically abused, mentally abused. She gets her period. She doesn't know what a period is. All the girls laugh at her, make fun of her, throw tampons at her. The teachers are bitches to her too. Nobody likes Carrie. Her mom doesn't like Carrie. The school doesn't like Carrie. So Carrie's going to get revenge. Carrie's going to get revenge on these motherfuckers. And it is, it's actually terrifying. And (laughs) I loved it. I loved it. The last of my favorite, the creme de la creme of novels was The Employees by Olga Ravin. I read it in two sittings. I didn't do any highlighting, but I need to read it again. It's one of those books that I think I'm going to reread even before the end of the year. It was about um, people in space, humans and artificial intelligence, although I really can't tell if they were all human or if they were all artificial intelligence or if they were humans that had parts of artificial intelligence because some of them had like spare parts, like there were parts of them that weren't human it was hard to distinguish but it doesn't matter it's told in snippets of this ride of them describing these meat sacks that they take care of they they seem botanical but also meaty and veiny and fleshy and alive and some of them are like sexual towards it some of them like to sniff it and touch it others are scared of it and like don't go into the room where they are and it's just these things that they that are in a room on a spaceship that they took from a planet and they're stuck on this spaceship and they'll never go back to earth. And they're working for this company and they, they're, they're like, why the fuck am I working for this company? They're like, you know, some of the employees are really want to be the best employees. It makes me think of just jobs in general. Like you have the coworkers who really want to be really good at their job and want to go up in their job and they're like committed to the company for life like you know those people are just going to retire from this job there's people who don't give a fuck and will do the bare minimum there's people who are just there for the paycheck there's people who are just they just need a job you know or they like it but not that much um people here have left their lives on earth their families their husbands their children who they'll never get to see again for this company so it's alien and futuristic and well-written and experimental and also commentary on the workplace. And I freaking loved it. And I really want to read her book on motherhood because this is really weird. And I have high hopes that even if it's a nonfiction book, it'll still be really weird. Um, So that's it for the favorite nonfiction, no, the favorite novels slash fiction, not nonfiction of this year. And then the last thing I have to talk about are my nonfiction. So I read a total of eight nonfiction books out of the 35. um, And that was 22% of the books that I read were nonfiction. And my top three were Wool Gathering by Patti Smith. This was my second time reading this. It was a short snippet on Patti Smith's childhood. Um very much written the way that patty smith writes if you've read m train just kids the year of the monkey it's like that but much smaller and just about being a little kid alongside her photographs as always loved this five stars um m train by patty smith as well took me a whole month to read about um her 
relationship, not to Robert Maplethorpe, a relationship with her other husband who she had kids with. I don't remember his name. Um, her travels, her in her 70s, things changing, buying a house, cafes cl- closing, change of routine, aging, writers, art, photography. Loved M Train, five out of five as well. And the last of the favorite nonfictions was 84, Sharing Crossroad. I learned about this book through Kayla from Books and Lala, and I purchased it at half price. Both me and my partner loved it. It's letters written by an old woman alone in New York City during the 70s. During the 70s? No. I don't know. During the Vietnam War, I think. And she's asking for these really... She's writing letters to an indie bookshop in England asking for these really rare books that you've never heard of before. And they have a correspondence about books and they become a family. And it's just beautiful. It's 20 years of letter writing between the bookshop and this old woman. And I loved it. I loved it. So those were all of my books so far that I've loved this year, all 35. My stats, my faves, and I can't wait to get to the end of the year so you can see all the other favorite books of the year. I hope you pick some of these up before the end of the year. Let me know if you've read any of them. And if you're looking forward to anything being published this year, I know I think I have a Clarice on pre-order. It's not the besieged city. I think there's like a little selected stories or chronicas that's being published. I also have something with spoons. It's a Deborah Levy book that's coming out as well on pre-order. So th- those are the books that I'm most looking forward to later this year. Oh, and of course, Mammoth by Eva Baltasar. I had it in Spanish, but I just know I'm going to appreciate it more in English. So I can't wait to read it. I think so when does that come out? Like October? I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Damn it. I wish that I was on their PR list and I already got to read Mammoth because I love Eva Altasad. I think, did I read Ben Mafras this year? I think I read it again last year. I read it twice. I've only read Bolded once, so I might reread Bolded before I read Mammoth because it's a trilogy, although they're, they don't have to do with each other. They're all about like queer women. Um, Mammoth is going to be about, I think it's about a woman who's trying to get pregnant. Um, yeah, I don't know. Those are the books I'm really excited about that are coming out this year. Those are my book stats, 35 books so far. And I'll see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this. Bye.